Horsnell, and I'm the chair of the Center for Local Prosperity, a nonprofit. Um, we work primarily in Nova Scotia, but we work throughout the I should say we work throughout the Maritimes as well. We're we're focused on really uh, creating conversations around um, localization and the role that that can play in creating thriving um, communities. And our particular focus that's evolving now is around uh, climate change and import substitution would be the kind of the two the two primary uh, focuses that we're, we're working on right now. I mean, I, I see that um, localization is does two things. One, probably our one of our best strategies for mitigating uh, the climate crisis because it reduces the carbon footprint by buying, producing, investing local. Uh, what kinds of shocks we might expect in a financial, economic, uh, uh, ecological, social um, localization I think creates um, viable, resilient local communities that can deal with and absorb those kinds of uh, shocks that you know already are, are happening just to haven't quite hit us here yet, but they've, they've certainly hit other communities in, in the world, and, and they will at some point probably come, come our way, and localization is a way to, to uh, a great strategy to, to, to prepare for and uh, to be resilient in the face of those, those shocks. So we planned an event at the Thinker's Lodge in Pugwash. And it was a confluence of three uh, factors that all came together at the same time. Firstly, it's an extremely potent location because of its history and the original conference that took place on nuclear proliferation. Secondly, it was the 60th anniversary. So we had the location and we had the timing, both very powerful. Thirdly, the second major issue facing mankind is climate change. The original topic was nuclear proliferation, and we wanted to reconvene the same format 60 years later to talk about climate change, which is the second biggest threat to mankind. And so we spent a, a long weekend um, both exploring you know, our understanding of the effects of the climate crisis and uh, then um, in getting some shared understanding of how that how it is impacting us now and how it will in the future, but then turning our attention to well, what can we do? Like, what are what are some some very um, uh, specific strategies that can be applied within our within our specific context? And for me, it's it's a great example of the kind of thing you know how you can take what is a, you know uh, can be viewed as a crisis and, and turn it into an opportunity. You know the other you know the other interesting thing that really came forward through the discussion was we had um, uh, two members of the Mi'kmaq community, uh, there, uh, Albert Marshall and Rebecca Thomas. What became really immediately um, uh, apparent, and it just kind of grew over the, the, the days that we were there, was the, the, uh, the crit absolutely critical role that the Indigenous uh, uh, worldview can play in what we're doing. You know, and, and it's, it's, it's not like something that they just made up. It's been in place for thousands of years, and so it has such a rich um, uh, and deep history that we can draw from. So whenever um, you know, they helped to ground every discussion that we had um, in that within that indigenous worldview. And uh, if we had not had that there, it would have been a fundamentally different discussion, yeah. and, and not as uh, not as well informed, not as grounded. And we've got so much to learn, frankly. The financial support we received from the Rural Communities Foundation was essential for the event. Uh, it was really uh, funding that also allowed us to leverage some other private foundations that came in. Uh, the county came in as well, Cumberland County. So we were able to put together a substantial financial base to really do a significant event, to bring in 24 thinkers, some from uh, the U.S., but mostly regional people, all invited, representing a full spectrum of local communities from everything from citizen uh, and volunteer um, organizations, municipal governance, some technical experts, climate change experts, 
and then a representative from Project Drawdown out of California, which is a large international effort to uh, mitigate the effects of climate change on a large scale.